All right, guys, today with this one, we got a, uh, a 2009 uh, Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. Uh, this transmission is the uh, 42RLE. And pretty much what happened with this was the, uh, uh, I don't know if the car was in an accident or if the, maybe the front U-joint let go, uh, the front drive shaft swung over, smashed the trans, uh, actually cracked the case right here. This is a pressure tap, so I don't even know if I would take a chance of even welding this, because uh, chances are there's a lot of pressure behind this. Uh, this one, a couple of these here got damaged, but this completely broke off. Um, and this comes from a good wholesale account. It's his personal car. Uh, so what I'm going to do, instead of just doing a case change, I'm going to kind of just run through it, put a kit in it, and put it back together. Uh, but there really wasn't much wrong with this. I looked at the CVIs or the clutch volume indexes. Uh, before we pulled it and all that, everything looked in pretty good shape, so uh, just wanted to film the uh, teardown. And um, I have a case already, I'm going to put it back together and uh, put it back in the car. So uh, let's start with this side. What do we have on this side? We have our input and we have our output sensor. Uh, we have here is our um, rain, rain switch, internal, internal rain switch. This is bolted onto the valve body, and there's a little extra harness here that we'll talk about when we get the uh, uh, when we're up to the valve body, when we're looking at the valve body. And this is actually for the variable line pressure solenoids. Uh, so this was added around 2007. So we'll get to that when we get the uh, valve body. Out. And of course, your solenoid pack connector is here. Uh, now, as you can see, I have the extension housing off already. Um, this is the uh, piece, the shaft, uh, maybe they call it the intermediate shaft that connects the trans to the transfer case. And this thing sometimes is not so easy to get off. It has a threaded, has threads in here. And what I do is I put a, I put a bolt in um, and I have an, an attachment. I put my vice grip on and I have attachment onto a slide hammer. And it probably took me a good, you know, 20, 25 minutes to bang this thing off. It's very, very tight in here. I guess that maybe the clip has to collapse. Um, but this thing is a real pain to get off. Uh, last one I did, this one actually came off fairly easy, but the last one actually had to put some heat on it. And it, it took a while to get the thing off. Uh, okay, so um, that's pretty much about it on, on this one, on the outside. So we're gonna, uh, I guess, start taking this thing apart. First thing I wanna do is take the uh, two sensors off. And those are eight millimeter. So let's see if we can get it this. This is kind of like a, a rear wheel drive 604. Okay, I gotta charge that battery. Let's see if I can break these loose here. Okay. So we're gonna get the, this is your input speed sensor. And the output speed sensor. Okay. The output speed sensor has the little, little tip on it here. The input speed sensor is uh, just kind of flat right on top. All right, so now I'm going to, just like to zip the, uh, uh, the pump bolts out. Okay, eight millimeter again. And I turn it upside down. Drop the pan. These things all got Loctite on them. So, a little tight coming out. All right, so now, let me get on millimeter. All right, 
right, we're gonna drop this pan, get this valve body out. All right, so the pan, of course, is uh, 10 millimeter. How easy this is going to come off. Well, I have to get a. There we go. All right, pins, you know, fairly clean. Again, this is pretty much uh, when a guy, uh, the guy drive shaft broke and busted the case. Uh, all right, so now I got to get my. Let's see. This one is it. All right, maybe that is a 27. Or oh, actually, probably a 25. It's probably a T25. A little tight. Let me get a small hammer. That's how you have to have it to get it out. Just to once again go over what we have here, uh, solenoid pack, the um, range switch, here is the harness connector for the variable line pressure solenoids, there is your transducer here and your line pressure solenoid here, but we're going to go over all that, why they added them uh, once we get this thing down. Same, they both have double springs in them. All right, 
right? So we can just, uh, it's right in here. We got the another accumulator there. That has a little, little snap ring. Has the snap room with the eyelids. Then we'll take the cover off. Now this one, these two face with the springs out and this one faces with the springs in. Alright, so let's get this to fall out. Alright. This also has the double spring in it. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get this pump out. I can actually just put this like this. Uh, all right, so for that, we're gonna get a slide hammer. That is in my drawer. Let me just grab that. Okay, so we got a couple of threaded holes here, uh, pretty much opposite. So here is the pump. You got four rings. You know, this train, again, like I said, should be in fairly good shape. Okay, here's the big drum. Houses the three sets of clutches, the reverse, the overdrive, and the underdrive. We'll open that up and take a look at those. A lot of snap rings. Alrighty, we got a four tab washer goes on here. Here is the front planet. Goes there and you have a bearing. Now we'll get the sun gear out. That goes there and there's another bearing, smaller one. All right, so now we're gonna get the snap ring out and get the intermediate, uh, we're gonna get the intermediate piston out, or the 2-4 piston. Okay, so let's see where the snap ring. Okay, so I'll probably go. Here's that snap ring. This holds the uh, whole intermediate um, piston and housing down. Okay, so that's uh, this is a molded piston in here. Here is the return spring on the Belleville spring. That's going to sit like that. All right, next coming out is the two four clutches. He's looking, uh, you know, everything looks in, uh, in good shape. All right, now we have that intermediate plate in there that we got to get out. And then we just got to see where that, we got to get another different screwdriver for that. Just got to see where that ends. We'll take that out, another snap ring, and then the little reverse clutch. This one end. All right, looks like it's.
it's coming. There's a little bit of a thick snapper, but it's not bad. And this one should have a... This snappering is, uh, is beveled on the one side, and it's not beveled on this side. Of course, the bevel has to face up. Okay, now we have to have the intermediate plate come out. And just like I had said on my uh, 604 teardown video, um, you have a snap ring, of course, here, and then you have another snap ring on the bottom. And when those two snap rings are in place and this plate is in place, the plate can't, can't move up and down. So you, it's, you really can't just get, if something's big, really can't just grab anything off the shelf and use it. Um, pretty much this is going to come as a set. I buy these, you know, from my supplier and it's a, a Mopar. So they come as a set and they, the plates come in different thicknesses. But it has to be a match set because that plate cannot move up and down once it's in place. All right, we're gonna take one of the uh, low reverse frictions out. Now let me get the uh, other snap ring out. This is a very uh, flimsy one. Let me just see where it, where it is. Okay. I guess this is very flimsy compared to this one, which is very stiff. So we have this on the top. And we have this on the bottom. I mean, everything is in place. This does does not move. The slightest bit is, is no good. It can, cannot move at all. It'll throw the uh, clearances off. It'll. Uh, it's not going to shift right. All right, and here are the low reverse frictions. These things uh, are in real good shape. So now, I mean, the case is pretty much empty. So, what we have to do now is we have to rear plan it out because we have to take this big nut off. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of some of this oil, uh, get set up for that with my sockets, and I'll be right back. All right, so let's see if we can get this, uh, this end nut off. Got a big socket on the end of the gun here. I'm going to try to hold it, not block anything. Okay, all right, here's the end nut. And I always replace this uh, when I do uh, the overhauls. Spacer that goes here, and then your bearings, of course, your bearing is going to go on just like that. All right, and you check the gears uh, for rocking back and forth. These, of course, everything is good. All right, and now we have the only thing we have really left in this case is uh, is the part. Uh, park mechanism which we'll take out and actually the low reverse piston uh, that we got to get out okay so there's a I guess like an eight millimeter we got to get that out to slide the rod out and we got to bang that rod out this one here is uh, the case is uh, uh, peened over all right so this should be an eight Actually, it's probably like a seven. Now, let me get a 
I had a socket for that. basically an eight. Okay, so that one, that one rod should slide right out. Okay, that's that one. And now this other one, we got to kind of bang this out. Uh, I'm not going to pass the peens. Here is the here is the parking pool, the parking uh, mechanism. It's got a a spring here. And I'll tell you, the first time that spring came out, I couldn't figure out how it went back on. I had to look at another one. All right, so we got to get this rod out because I don't think there was one in the new case, and there is not. Feedback to this. Knock it right out. also a, a a cap, an end cap in there. A little end cap which probably comes in the overhaul kit. I actually forgot about that. Okay, so now this case is stripped except for a reverse piston, which is a molded piston. We're gonna get that. Uh, just gotta find my snap ring pliers. Here they are. Um, this um, has a bell bell spring in it, but use your snap ring pliers, you should be able just to uh, get this started, get this snap ring started, and then I use like a hook and just pull pull the thing out. You know what, I gotta turn this up so I can get a decent shot at it. All right, so I got it started. Then I kinda use my seal puller, and I just work it around. And it comes right out. So that's the snap ring. Here is the Belleville spring. Here is the molded piston, which we're gonna of course put back because we don't think there's too much wrong with it. And then we got three small, I think these things are T20 screws that hold the apply dish in or you know, we call it the dog dish. And a new one of those comes in a kit, but I want the uh, screws. I want the little screws. So the little ones, little ones here. Yes, three of those. Bushing. Um, we're gonna open up the uh, 
the big drums. We'll look at the clutches on there. And we'll talk about, I'm not going to, probably not going to open the valve body, but we'll talk about what's on the valve body. Here is the little dog dish, they call it, or the apply um, uh, play for the uh, low reverse uh, piston. And this is going to be changed. I have a new one of these. All right, so this case pretty much is stripped, and the only thing left in there is the bypass valve in the pump area, in the bell housing. Uh, it goes right, right behind the pump. All right, so that's good for that case. This case is now stripped. There's nothing left. Again, right here uh, is the thing was busted right off. It's a uh, pressure tap, uh, so I definitely would change the case instead of welding it because the amount of pressure that's behind that. All right, so let me just get uh, organized here and we'll uh, open some of these things up. Open up the uh, drum, we'll look at the pump, and talk about the valve body. Alright, so let's open up the pump. good it's nice and nice and smooth here let me just uh, reposition the camera you see it might be a little high let me bring it down some okay here's the body and gears and this is the uh, uh, the Geroder style gears. Okay, these have two, two dots on them. A dot on each one and these both were facing down. So the way I'm going to put this back together, of course, is the same way it came apart with the dots facing down. All right, but all this looks uh, looks good. I'm just gonna change the uh, has the Babbitt uh, pump bushing in here. I'm gonna be changing that to a brass one. But all that looks uh, looks fine. All right, here is the uh, input drum. <clears throat> all right, let's open that. Let me know what the washer just fell. I heard it. I'm just it back. Bearing, I mean. I don't want to lose that. Okay, so let me grab my little screwdriver here. Okay. All right, so the first thing we're going to take out on this is the reverse. Okay, I guess the reverse input, as they would call it. There's two of these clutches. I just got to dry up a little on this. Comes right out. These look, uh, <clears throat> look good as we knew they would. All right, now we have another snap ring around the outside, and this is going to house the uh, the next set of clutches is the overdrive. And this actually, uh, the overdrive clutch gets applied in third. So if you're watching a scan tool, and you're watching for the CPI to change as it adjusts, you're going to see that change when it shifts on the 2-3 shift. You're not going to see it uh, on the 3-4 shift because the clutch is already on. All right, so where does this... Okay, it is right there. Okay. 
This one is a straight snap ring, and there's going to be one underneath the pressure plate, which is a wavy snap ring. All right, so we're going to take this off. Okay, here is your overdrive clutch hub and clutches. You can pull the whole thing out. All right, these again look, uh, everything looks fine. You know, I double checked all the CVIs and really wasn't a problem. All right, you got a, all right, this is the underdrive clutch hub. And you got a five tab washer that goes here. Not to be com confused with the four tab washer that goes here. All right, and then we have uh, that will ride against this uh, metal one or the steel washer. Three tabs goes on the inside, and then on the outside, the tabs stick up through and keep this one from turning. And then you have another bearing right here. I'm going to take the bearing out. I've just got to pop it out. Come right out. Okay, so now we got that other snap ring. This is around the outside. And this one is wavy. So we got a wavy one, and then we got the flat one. The wavy one goes in first. You put the pressure plate in, and then you put the flat one in. All right, now we have another snap ring. Let's see where this one starts. This is another one of those pressure plates that can't move. So this is uh, two more snap rings that we have to get out. Let me just use my light so I can find the opening. All right, there it is. This is another one that if you had to change this, just like the one in the case, it would have to be done as a set. This has a bevel and is flat, and the bevel has to face up. Here is the plate, the pressure plate that's in between the underdrive clutch and the overdrive clutch, and again, this is usually is sold as a set. And we got another snap ring. We have the flimsy one now. Okay, that is right there. A lot of snap rings in this. Here is the other one. It's a little more sturdy than the one in the case, but still. We have the snap ring, we have the pressure plate, and we have the other snap ring. And when this is in place, this plate cannot move up and down at all. Totally cannot move. All right, now here is the underdrive clutch. Okay, very nice, no problem. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll take this drum apart. Uh, so before I get this snap ring out, okay, I thought I saw something that didn't look right, but it looks okay. Before I get this snap ring out, uh, they're holding pretty much the drums together. I'm going to take a little little curl about that's going to hold the input shaft in. All right, so that I'm just going to kind of see if I can get my scribe in there. That might be a little too. All right, we'll try this one a little sharper. Okay, I got it. Now I've just got to get it. Okay. All right, so here's a little clip that holds in the input shaft, and then pretty much I just hit the thing down. And out it comes. There's three rings I'm gonna change. All right, now I'm just gonna go to the press machine. I'm gonna take that snap ring out. 
and I will be right back. All right, so I got this snap ring out over by the uh, foot press. So, of course, here is your snap ring. All right, you got a, a balance piston here. Spring. This actually is your underdrive um, piston, apply, apply piston. All right, now we have another snap ring uh, down in here. Now we have to get that out. And this snap ring actually has a taper on it. Okay, so one one side of this, I'm not really sure if we'll be able to see this, but this actually has a small taper on the inside, and this is pretty much flat on the outside, but it has to go in with the taper facing up, so it actually will seat all the way in. If you accidentally put it in this way, pretty much as soon as you put this thing in drive, it's going to pop right out. So you got to make sure you watch that, and there's a small taper on the inside right here, and that's got to face up. All right, now we're going to use a rubber mallet. We're going to, where I got my little dead blow here, we're going to separate these two here is the, the hub. Alright, so this is the, uh, I guess, the clutch up here, and then we have two pistons. Alright, they call this one the input clutch hub and the overdrive reverse piston. Alright, so this is the double drum or double piston setup, as they call it, or as I would call it. And now uh, we're going to wash all this up, change all the lip seals in here. All right. Also, you know, I wanted to uh, touch on this. Inside this hub, there are two bushings. And I always like the, these. These seem okay because they don't really have much. Have a little bit of movement here. Okay, but sometimes these are really bad, and when the bushings are really bad, uh, it will burn out the overdrive clutch. Uh, and Sonics makes a replacement uh, to knock the two bushings out, knock the one in. Of course, you got to make sure the hole stays clear. And there's three different ones, so you got to really mic up the outside diameter of this. There's the um, uh, I guess there's the early, the late, and the late oversized. So there's three different ones that go in here, so of course you got to make sure you use the right one, and the way you determine that is measuring, miking the outside of this up, and, and you're getting the size of this, and it should tell you what bushing to use when you um, buy the paper, you know, when you buy the whichever set of bushings you buy, it has all three of them with all the, the, the uh, measurements. All right, so that's one thing you want to look out for on this. Um, make sure there's not too much play here. If the overdrive clutch is bad, you want to look at that real close. I normally change that as a uh, rebuild procedure. Now, when you, you, I do those for the 604s, the 606s, and the 42 RLEs, but the 62 TE has a similar setup and those you don't put the bushing in. I think they need those to have a little bit of play in them because I actually called Sonics and asked them when I did my first 62 TE because it had a little play in it and I was comparing it to a 604 so I said hey can I use one of these bushings in there and they said no don't do it. So I just left it as is. Alright now let's get this valve body. All right, now to go over this stuff one more time, solenoid pack, range switch, 
here is your harness for the variable line pressure solenoids and the two solenoids that were added. Okay, now on the 604s and like the 42 RLEs, the line pressure is predetermined. So when you put this thing in drive at an idle, you're going to probably have 120 pounds, uh, probably between first and second, maybe 120, 140 pounds. I think third and fourth is roughly about 95, 100 pounds. And reverse could be 150 to 180. Um, so why did they add these solenoids? Uh, they started adding these in 2007 and pretty much for better efficiency, better fuel economy and what that means is these, the solenoids uh, actually lower line pressure at an idle. Alright, so instead of you having in drive at an idle 120 pounds uh, uh, of pressure turning this pump and you know working this converter and turning this pump which it would take a lot more effort and possibly a lot more fuel to be used uh, they, they added these to lower line pressure maybe to 80 pounds at an idle so again it's it, it, the pump doesn't have to work as hard um, and when they added these they added I think maybe six new trouble codes and pretty much you know, if the solenoid goes bad, uh, you would have kind of like a, uh, an early style 604. So at an idle, instead of having 80 pounds, you'd have 120 pounds. So this is the line pressure solenoid, and this is the transducer, which answers back to the computer, sends the feedback to the computer. And that's pretty much why they added these purposely to lower line at an idle for more efficiency, better fuel economy, stuff like that. Um, and again, if it goes bad, you have a check engine light on, of course, but just like a regular 604. So um, probably not going to open up this valve body. Uh, everything looks pretty good here. Normally got a lot of crap growing up on here, but there's not even anything there. So I'm just going to turn this over, let it drain, and I'm going to wash my stuff up, put this in the tank, you know, put everything in the tank and kind of just put this back in when it's time. Now one last thing with this extension housing. This here I took out of it and this is for the loop. This actually fits right in just like this. Here's the uh, oil for the loop. And you got to just kind of push that in place and that and that sits there. So this will keep uh, probably the bearing in the back uh, loop, the rear bearing, you know, the, for the rear planet. Um, and that's really about it. So I'd like to take this out so I don't lose it. And this will come right out, you know, you change it. And it just kind of goes right back in like that. So that's what that looks like. Put that aside. Here's the extension housing. And this is the uh, 42RLE. Um, just going to run through it real quick. Uh, put a kit in it, put it back together, get it back in the car. So I thank you guys for watching. Uh, and have a nice day. We'll see you next one.